All right, man. What do you mean? I said, you got any pain? It's like, what's the pain? I'm like, oh, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now join us at U.S. Corrupt Cops as we uncover cases of innocent individuals unjustly arrested by corrupt law enforcement. Subscribe, like, and share our latest video to help raise awareness and demand accountability. If you like this video, press 1. On January 6, 2021, David Henry was driving through Tacoma, Washington. He came to a halt at a red traffic light and remained stationary for a few seconds, awaiting the light to switch to green. However, he momentarily became distracted and glanced up, mistakenly perceiving the traffic light as green. Consequently, Mr. Henry began driving, only to find himself in a collision with an oncoming vehicle from the left-hand side. Shortly after, Officer Ron Kovsky from the Tacoma Police Department arrived at the scene and promptly engaged with Mr. Henry. I gotta let you know we're being audio and video recorded. Okay. What happened? I saw the light turn green, so I went and smacked. Were you turning left? I was going straight. Okay, so you were going this way or this way? That way. And where was he coming from? They were coming this way. They just came out. I think. So they're going this way as you're crossing the intersection? Yes. Okay. Where did you hit them? Okay. Are you injured? I think so. Okay. You got your license and insurance on you? Yeah. Let's let's step away so they can drive. So here's this back. So a couple questions, uh, Mr. Henry. Okay, where are you coming from? Uh, downtown. Where are downtown? I was at a, I was by the casino. Did you have a couple drinks in the casino? I wasn't. Officer Ron unfairly assumed Mr. Henry was intoxicated despite lacking evidence like the smell of alcohol or drugs, and Mr. Henry's behavior was likely due to shock from the accident. Officer Ron's intrusive questioning infringed on Mr. Henry's rights. He had the right to remain silent under the Fifth Amendment and wasn't obligated to speak to the police. Officer Ron's behavior appears increasingly suspicious as the scenario unfolds. He okay. was in the center lane, and he went straight forward and hit us a T-bone. Do you remember what light you had? Did you see what happened? I gotta let you know we're being out here video recorded. Okay. What'd you see? Um, I was sitting here. Uh, the red car went through a red light, hit them, spun them all the way around, and he got out mad at them. This is my car. I love this car. And, it's just and he had a, hot, a red light on It was a red light. He was just standing right next to you? He went. He actually went over into the turn lane. And, uh, so there was another car next to you and he went around that car? Everybody and... was stopped. He was the only one who went to the right. Okay, so so just to confirm, you're here, there was another car here. He goes around this car. He went around and bam. That's okay. In the footage, Officer Ron approached some witnesses to gather their statements on the collision. Unfortunately, the accounts provided were rather inaccurate. One witness claimed that Mr. Henry drove around another vehicle, leading to the accident. This assertion was false. It's important to note that witnesses may struggle to accurately recall events that happen quickly. However, this underscores the inherent unreliability of witness testimony and emphasizes that it should not be the primary source of evidence. Despite this, Officer Ron continued his relentless questioning. He seemed convinced that Mr. Henry was under the influence, perhaps influenced by the inaccuracies in witness testimony. Watch closely as Officer Ron subtly transitions to having Mr. Henry perform field sobriety tests, seemingly offering him a chance to prove his innocence. Okay, what were you doing down there? I was, uh, I was buying some weed. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Did you smoke a little bit afterwards? No. When was the last time you smoked? Yesterday. Okay, yeah, how? I got still on the track. You know, how much? Uh, I Actually, I didn't even smoke yesterday. Do you, do you usually smoke? No. 
Yeah. So if not yesterday, when was the last time you did smoke? A year ago. A year ago? Yeah. Okay, so only now you're coming back to smoking? Yeah. Okay, and where are you going now? Uh, home. I'm going home. Where's home at? Still good? Yeah, I was just out doing errands, like buying some groceries, paying and, bills. And you, you said you have a green light? Yeah, I saw a green light. And I hit the gas. I couldn't have been going more than five, ten miles an hour and just smashed. I got hit hard. Like, that was fast. You said you saw a green light and you just you went ahead and yeah I pushed the gas pedal so I moved forward I didn't slam it to the floor or anything okay yeah okay. Uh, do you take any medication for anything no do you have any medical mental conditions no okay you prescribed anything that you're not taking no okay. Would you like to do some voluntary tests? I want to make sure you're okay to drive. Yeah. Okay, perfect. You want to yeah, throw that back in there? Yeah. Can I put this in my car real quick? What's in your car? Okay, put this in my car. I'll just have the fire fire hold on to it real quick, if you don't mind, sir. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Yeah, I'll close it. Don't worry. About it. So, a couple questions. Yeah. Officer Ron was suspicious that Mr. Henry might have been driving under the influence of marijuana, despite its legalization in Washington state. Mr. Henry claimed he hadn't smoked at all, which was later confirmed. Whether it was wise for Mr. Henry to cooperate and agree to take the field sobriety tests is a question that needs to be examined. Okay, can you see the tip of this pen here? Yeah. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do, okay? You're gonna stand with your feet together, hands at your sides, okay? I'm gonna move this tip of the pen left to right, up and down. I want you to keep your head perfectly still and follow this with your eyes only. Do you understand? Okay. Cool. My camera went. Oh. Good times. He's not. I asked him, I said, are you hurting? He's like, what are you hurting? He said, do you have any pain? He's like, what's pain? I'm like, oh, you're done. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. I'd say more, but I yeah, yeah, yeah. no longer can. My face, my face has plenty. I can, I can read my words. Yeah, dude. My face reads pretty well, usually. Even the mask, the eyes will do well. I just discovered that my light bar doesn't work, so that's cool. Your light bar? <laughs> I went to turn around, I was like, oh, we're gonna, well, that's the next thing for me. He loves DUIs, so this is actually, oh, he loves them. He's probably thrilled. Ooh, early. You know, 14.30 is a little, a little early. Yeah, well, and I don't think there's a time limit for when you use drugs, so. <laughs> Whenever the mood strikes, yeah. oh. starting well. Fires, we blocked the center effect, and everyone was like flipping out. It's kind of made it easier. That's at my car. Okay, make sure you keep your hands right here. Okay, 
So whenever you're ready, go ahead and Yeah, we actually, here. we were up there for about 18 hours. We were up there for about 18 hours. Oh, I know you guys are excited. I felt bad for you guys. I was guarding, like, just staying guard, basically. I was like, We took a break, literally, we took an accident over there. Yeah, you guys were laying on the road. took a nap on 56. I know, we were there. I was sitting there. I was like, oh, these poor guys are tired. I was like, I don't care who sees this. No, who cares? At that point, you know, I mean, that's a lot of time. Physically do it. I mean, that's I a lot. That yeah, that's that's horrible. My sister's uh, my sister's West Pierce. Yeah. And she's like, man, we've never had anything like that. That's. Then we had the two, the three house fires. At the same yeah, time. the same day. Yeah. That was a terrible day. I worked OT that day. Did you? Man, my lungs were rough after that. <laughs> Couple days of coughing up a lot. One of your colleagues actually called it in. Yeah, it's Trent. He's on my. He's on our yeah, squad. Yeah. Okay. He's like, ah. Oh, Do you mind standing by with this gentleman? Not a problem. How you doing, man? Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> Doesn't seem like a great day for you. No, no. What car were you in? That's a pretty bad one. You hurting? You don't think you're hurting? Usually I know like that's like a yes or no kind of, yeah. you know, like yes I'm in pain or no I'm not in pain. You care for me to set up a little bit? Three sheets to the wind. What's Three sheets to the wind. Yeah. Three sheets to the wind. Do you know that phrase? Now that's a southern phrase, I guess. It's, it's just a little off. Do you have? Hey, good news, my light bar doesn't work anymore. Good. Uh, when I was like, you have the worst light. I know. I know. I think they're nice. Yeah. Have a worse luck. He seems know. like it. They said, uh, they asked him, are you okay? He's like, oh. all right. Apparently, is that video footage? The actual footage? Mm -hmm. Would you mind looking at it? No, no, I'll be happy to. Yeah, yeah, and I'll get info from her, so. And add in the call because she's there for that. Good info. Mr. Henry went through the usual sobriety tests administered by law enforcement, like the horizontal gaze nystagmus, HGN, walk and turn, and one leg stand. These tests are commonly used to gauge if someone is drunk. However, there are worries about how accurate and reliable these tests are, because studies have shown that police officers can sometimes misunderstand the results. For instance, a study by Patrick Braun found cases where officers mistakenly thought sober individuals were drunk. Despite these concerns, Mr. Henry seemed to do well on the tests according to the video footage. This situation emphasizes that while these tests are standard practice, they might not always provide clear evidence of intoxication. Therefore, it's important to look at other factors and evidence in DUI investigations. You got everything you need, sweetie? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right, thank you. So this next test, it's a voluntary test. It is not used for any evidentiary value in court. Would you like to take part in this test? That breath life? Yeah. Yes. You will? Okay. Yeah. What's that? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This isn't a bill or anything, this is so we can not play with you, let you know your options, okay? Sure, thanks. Alright, set the best you can right there. Alright, thank you. Okay, sir. Sir, sir, just take a deep breath in. And exhale through the stoop, but you're blowing up a balloon, okay? Keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, okay. Okay, so you're on arrest for DUI, so go ahead and put your hands behind your back. Yes, sir, I am. Go ahead and put your hands behind your back, give me your other hand, right here. It doesn't matter, just put your hands behind your back. Don't resist, put your other hand behind your back. I didn't drink anything. You don't have to drink to be a DUI. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and abuse against you in the court of law. You have the right this time to talk to a lawyer and have a present with you while you're being questioned. If you don't afford to hire a lawyer, won't be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. Do you understand your rights? Yes or no? 
Would you like me to read your rights again? Yes. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right this time to talk to a lawyer and have him present with you while you're being questioned. If you cannot afford to hire a lawyer, why won't be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish? Do you understand your rights? As absurd as it may sound, Mr. Henry found himself in handcuffs, charged with driving under the influence. This happened immediately after he registered a perfect zero on the breathalyzer test, indicating no presence of alcohol in his system. This only serves to underscore Officer Ron's abuse of power. Let's examine the police report for this incident. Officer Ron seemed to base his suspicions solely on the fact that Mr. Henry had visited a marijuana dispensary. However, as previously discussed, marijuana is entirely legal in Washington. Mr. Henry had every right to be there, and his presence alone should not have led to assumptions about his sobriety. Furthermore, Officer Ron admitted to not observing any signs of impairment during the horizontal gaze nystagmus HGN test, and Mr. Henry's blood alcohol level was confirmed to be zero. Essentially, Mr. Henry was being arrested on mere suspicion of marijuana influence without any substantial evidence. Okay, let's go over there. Just have to have a bowl yes, no, no, I'm not after this. I have a drink. Come on, Gus. Because I used to have a DUI seven years ago, you're doing this. No, that has nothing to do with yeah, it, my Yeah, it friend. is. You're you're face here. Face the car, okay? A faulty breathalyzer test? You should know this. You're black. You should know this. This is racism at its finest. I'm sorry you feel that. Do you have any needles on you, anything sharp that's going to stick me or no. poke me or hurt me? No. Okay. Okay, let's switch sides. Let's switch sides. Yeah. Do you need anything from your car, my friend? my friend, let's go in the back of the car. Let's go on the other I side. I wasn't actually. drunk at all. You don't have to be drunk to be a DUI. I'm not high either. Well, you that's even... that's your opinion, my friend. It's a fact. Okay. <laughs> what are you, a medical professional? No, you're not. Have a seat, my friend. Was... <laughs> Where's my cell phone and stuff? Where's that? I'll get uh, it. You know, is it? We're in the hey, area. free America! Free America! Watch your knee over there. You have a perfect. A bag? Yes. We're going to ask about a bag. It's over. You don't give. It's going to take my life away. Would We're you be surprised to know I had a job? No, I wouldn't actually. Would you be surprised to know I had a college degree? No, I wouldn't. Would be you surprised. be surprised to know that I'm going to grad school? That's awesome. I'm what are you going for? A PhD. What are you going for? I'm going to be a psychology doctor. That's awesome. I have a master's in counseling. Well, you're doing terrible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, sorry. Arrest me, I was in an accident. Sober as a duck. Okay. Why are you cooling me? Mr. Henry was arrested for driving under the influence, DUI, even though he was not intoxicated. He was forced to undergo a blood test at the hospital without his consent, leading to a significant medical bill. He had to attend numerous court hearings throughout the year and was ultimately cleared of all charges on December 17, 2021 when the blood test results showed he was not under the influence. Despite mentioning plans to sue, there have been no updates on any legal action taken by Mr. Henry. On January 4, 2020, Harris Elias, who works as both a general contractor and a pilot, was driving through Fort Collins, Colorado, when he noticed a vehicle behind him driving aggressively. 
To avoid causing any issues or potential accidents, Elias changed lanes to let the vehicle pass. However, the vehicle, driven by Officer William Gates of the Loveland Police Department, continued to tail him closely and eventually pulled Elias over for a traffic stop. Hi, how you doing? Good. Hey, Officer Gates. Uh, the reason I stopped you, uh, you didn't signal your lane change. We're going uh, about 15 to 18 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone. No, you moved from the center lane over to the left lane and you failed to signal your lane change. All right, do you have a driver's license and insurance with you? Yeah, that's cool. How much have you had to drink tonight? What's that? I said, how much have you had to drink tonight? You don't want to answer that question? Okay. Well, I smell the overwhelming odor of alcohol coming from your vehicle. You're doing uh, 22 miles an hour under the speed limit, and you failed to signal a lane change. Okay. So on a scale of zero being completely sober and 10 being the most intoxicated you've ever been, what do you feel like? Okay. All right, just hang tight for me, man. I'll be right back with you. Officer Gates accuses Mr. Elias of not using his turn signal and driving significantly below the speed limit. Mr. Elias, aware that these accusations are baseless, refuses to engage further with Officer Gates. Despite being sober, Mr. Elias is falsely accused of smelling like alcohol. Two additional officers from the Larimer County Sheriff's Office arrive at the scene. Hi. Hey. So I'm following South on College and we're doing 15 to 18 miles an hour. And uh, he's uh, has to signal a lane change from the, from the center lane to the left lane. Asked him how he reeks like booze. Asked him how much he's had to drink. I don't want to answer that question. And I said on a scale of zero to ten, what do you feel like? And he goes, that's irrelevant. So I don't know how this is going to go. <laughs> Officer Gates goes back to Mr. Elias's car. Hey, sir, I'm going to have you step out of the car for me, okay? So uh, the reason that I asked you out of the car is obviously I could smell an overwhelming over odor of alcohol. Don't fall over there. Uh, coming from your vehicle, your eyes are bloodshot, watery, glassy. Uh, so how much have you had to drink? I'm not going to answer any questions. Okay. Would you want to do some voluntary tests for no, me sir. to make sure that you're safe to drive? Nope. Okay. All right. Go ahead and turn around. Face your vehicle. Sure. Place your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers with your palms together. Do you have anything on you that I need to be concerned about? I told you I'm not going to answer any questions. You're not going to answer any questions? Okay. So my question is, am I going to get poked with anything when I check your pockets? So I think that's a common courtesy to let me know if I'm going to get stuck with a knife or a needle or anything else when I check your pockets. Okay. So is that a yes or a no? You know, just hang on. Officer Gates proceeds to conduct a search on Mr. Elias and then escorts him to the back of his cruiser. So I have to advise you of what's called Colorado Express Consent, okay? And that says by the act of driving in the state of Colorado, when arrested for driving under the influence, which you're under arrest for that charge right now, you've already expressly consented to a chemical test of your blood or your breath. Which test would you like to take? Uh, I don't know. I have to understand that a little better. So by the act of driving in the state of Colorado, when arrested for driving under the influence, which you're under arrest for that charge right now, You've already expressly given your consent to a chemical test of your blood or your breath. Which test would you like to take? Can I understand the extent of the you call it expressed consent law? Yeah, so when you sign for your driver's license, you already expressly consented to a chemical test of your blood or your breath if you're arrested for driving under the influence. Okay. So which chemical test would you like to take? So do I have an under is that is that the under is that the legal definition of the un is that the understanding that I'm allowed to have? Yes, that's what I'm supposed to advise you of when you're under arrest for driving under the influence. It's called Colorado Express Consent. And 
And I'll tell you again, that means by the act of driving in the state of Colorado, okay. when arrested for driving under the influence, which you're under arrest for that charge right now, gotcha. you've already expressly con or you've already expressly consented to a chemical test of your blood or your breath. Which test would you like to take? Do I have? I mean, is that the information that I'm legally given? Is that yes. is that the extent of the information that I'm legally given? Yes, sir. You do not have a copy of the express consent law that I could understand better. Uh, I can. I can absolutely. Uh, you'll you'll sign an express consent affidavit later on in this process, which will give you more uh, information about it. But that's what I'm legally supposed to advise you of okay. when you're under arrest. So what? At what point do I have to make that decision, and why do I have to make that? Uh, I'm sorry. Decision. You have to make that decision now. Uh, so I know whether to take you to the hospital to get a blood drop or to the police station to do a breath test. And what is the um, process of both? So the process for the blood test is that we take you to uh, Poudre Valley Hospital. They draw two vials of your blood that gets sent into the state of Colorado and analyzed. Uh, it takes about six to eight weeks to return. And for the breath test, I take you down to the police department. You blow into a certified instrument twice, and then that produces your breath sample results right away. So if it takes six to eight weeks, mm -hmm. what does that mean for the process for tonight? Well, that doesn't change the process going forward. Okay, so go back. Right. Go so, ahead and sit back. Okay. Sorry, sorry, don't push on my shoulder, please. Don't push on my shoulder. Thank you. Okay, so would you like to take a chemical test of your blood or your breath? Um, a breath test. Please. A breath test. Okay, just hang tight for a second. I'll be right back. Officer Gates is accused of frequently muting his body camera during interrogations, which goes against department policy. During Mr. Elias's questioning, Gates mutes his camera and reportedly makes up statements in his reports. The camera stays muted for 25 minutes while Mr. Elias is taken to jail, where he tests negative for alcohol. Recognizing the possibility of an unlawful arrest, Gates asks Mr. Elias for consent to a blood test. Breath test came back uh, not consistent with your uh, driving actions and your mannerisms. Uh, so, would you be willing to take a blood test? I don't understand what the implications of the answer to that question are. Already with the test. Right. So, so like I told you, so your your mannerisms as you exited the vehicle, your eyes, um, things like that, your driving actions—they're not consistent. Um, I understand that you blew triple zeros, um, so that leads me to believe that there's something else going on. Okay, so uh, being that I, I, again, had reasonable suspicion to arrest you for driving under the influence, you've provided a breath test that's triple zeros, um, it doesn't, like I said, it doesn't make sense with your driving uh, and your mannerisms. Mm -hmm. So um, I advised you of Colorado Express consent again. Um, and now again, I'll ask if you take a chemical test. Officer Gates unjustly accuses Mr. Elias of DUI without proper evidence, ignores his request for legal representation, and forces him to undergo a blood test under threat of losing his driving privileges. Gates manipulates his body camera during the process and eventually pressures Mr. Elias into consenting to the blood test. Chief Tizer has a track record of not holding officers accountable for wrongful DUI arrests. I've already consented, so I'm not going to sign anything else without an attorney present. Okay, well if you don't sign it, it's a refusal. Okay, refusal. How is this a refusal? This is a medical test. Right, that's exactly what it is. But in order for the phlebotomist to draw your blood, that consent form needs to be signed. And she can't draw your blood without that consent form. Over the next five minutes, Mr. Elias inquired about the form and the integrity of the test, expressing concern that the state might draw his blood and manipulate the test or replace the vials. Due to Mr. Elias's numerous questions and insistence on reading the form thoroughly, Gates, in defense, became increasingly angry and aggressive. They just six weeks ago have her blood sent to another lab to have analyzed. They got the blood from CBI, they sent it into a lab to be analyzed, okay? So, for the last time, are you going to sign the form so the flag? I'm going order? to consent okay. to the blood test. Now, sign it. I, would like to, I can't answer that until I read the form, sir. There's a lot of fine print on that. I'm not trying to make your job difficult. I'm trying to understand the form. This is a Colorado Bureau of Investigation. 
investigations for. You told me that there was an express consent form before. It's very confusing. There's nothing confusing. I'm under stress. There My is. freedom is at stake, sir, and you're okay. out of line. Okay. Then go ahead and put your hands on the handcuffs. All right. We'll just call this a refusal. I never refused, sir. I simply asked to read the form. Okay. Well, and, and again, I've explained the form to you a number of times, okay? So, refusal to submit to a chemical test can result in the administrative sanctions against your driving privilege. Okay. So, do I have an opportunity to sign the form or not? Do I have an opportunity to read the form? Here's the deal. I'm not going to play this game, okay? I'm not this playing a game, thing. sir. This is my freedom that you're talking Lower about. Lower your voice. Yes, sir. We have someone in here that does not need to feel threatened in any manner. I'm being okay. handcuffed. I so, don't threaten you. I'm sorry. Lower your voice. Yes, sir. Okay. So, I will give you one opportunity to sign the form. I would like to read the okay. form. So, then go ahead and read the form right now. And then I will take you out of handcuffs if you would like to sign the form and get sent to the blood test. Okay. This game is over. Mr. Elias, after getting pulled over by Officer Gates for suspected DUI, goes through a series of troubling events. Even though he later tests negative for any substances, his ordeal results in significant personal and professional consequences. The Loveland Police Department's aggressive pursuit of DUI arrests, driven by grants and awards, fosters a culture where officers compete to make arrests, leading to unjustified stops and charges. Officer Gates, in particular, faces allegations of conducting systematic fishing expeditions for DUI arrests. This pattern has led to numerous innocent individuals being wrongly arrested and charged. Consequently, Mr. Elias and others have filed lawsuits against the department, Officer Gates and Sergeant Hill for their practices. On October 22, 2022, Officer Flynn from the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department was on patrol duty just before midnight. While observing a vehicle speeding on the highway, he activated his lights and sirens, initiating a pursuit and eventually pulling over the female driver. The entire incident was recorded on Officer Flynn's body camera, allowing us to analyze his investigation and establish that the female driver was unequivocally sober and not under the influence of alcohol. Hi, what you? Good evening, ma'am. I'm Officer Flynn. The reason I pull you over is you were speeding. Do you, have your, do you have your license, registration, insurance? Yes. One second. Okay, I'm Sorry, you're right. I was, I hit it a little hard. Right there. Sorry. Where is that? Can I check that? Yeah, sure. Do you still love on, uh... I'm sure you do. I'm sorry. No problem. Where are you coming from now? Okay, do you have your insurance as well? Yeah. Alright, let me show you out your paperwork. I'll be right back with you. Have you had anything to drink tonight? No, I had one drink about 7 o'clock. 7 o'clock? Okay, you have any uh, controlled substances, cannabis, anything like that? No, I mean, have you have you taken any today? No, I've taken. No, I only use it for sleeping. Okay, if you would step out and do some exercise, make sure you're not on the influence. We'll have you on your way home. In this situation, a woman is pulled over by Officer Flynn for speeding on the highway. She quickly admits her mistake and apologizes for speeding. Officer Flynn, well within his rights, asks for her ID and she provides it without any issues. During the interaction, Officer Flynn questions if she had been drinking that night, but the question seems routine and not specifically aimed at her. There are no signs like slurred speech or alcohol odor to justify the question, and the driver appears sober, displaying none of the 15 clues associated with drunk driving, as outlined by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Additionally, the driver admits to having had one drink around 7 p.m., nearly five hours before the encounter, making it highly unlikely that she is still under the influence. All right, ma'am, come on back over here. All right, do you have any medical condition with your eyes besides wearing glasses? No. 
Are you able to walk a straight line? Yes. Can you bounce on one foot? Yes. All right, if you would, come on over here for me. Stand right in front of me. All right, down six. Bring your feet together, hands at your sides, and actually put your glasses up on top of your head. Okay. Thank you. All right, you see this red light? Yes. You're going to follow the red light with your eyes only, and you're going to keep your head still. Do you understand? Yes. Keep your head still. Just as far as you can go without moving your head. Alright, give me one second. Officer Flynn just gave the female driver a few sobriety tests like the horizontal gaze nystagmus, HGN, walk and turn, and one leg stand to check if she's drunk. She aced the HGN test, showing no signs of intoxication. However, during the walk and turn test, she seemed nervous and anxious, probably because she was standing on the side of a highway at night with fast-moving cars and bright flashlights. This raises questions about how accurate these tests are, especially when factors like nerves and external conditions can affect a driver's performance. Yeah, that's fine. All right, ma'am, if you would come to this side of the line, it's up to you if you want to leave the um, the heels on, because uh, it's going to involve walking heel to toe in the straight line. <laughs> do you okay. think you'll be able to do it? I mean, I'm nervous because of, I've never been in this position before, but... I'll show you what you got to do and you let me know if you can do it in your shoes, all right? All right. So, if, you're kind of me out, but... if you would, go ahead and place your left foot on the line for me, please. And right foot in front, heel touching toe, just like I'm doing. Arms at your sides. Okay, so it'll be just like this with your arms at your sides. No, don't start just yet. Wait, you gotta stay in the position while I explain it. It's the standardization of the exercise. Alright, so left foot on the line, right foot in front. Right foot in front, heel touching toe. Arms at your sides. Now hold that position. Don't start until I tell you to. When I tell you to begin, I want you to take nine heel to toe steps just like this. One, two, three, all the way up till nine. Imagine this your ninth step, leave that front foot where it's at. Take a series of small steps to turn around and take nine heel to toe steps back. All right, it's important that once you start, you don't stop. Keep your arms down at your sides and count your steps out loud. Do you have any questions? No, I don't have questions. It just feels like, almost feels like a setup, but okay. Almost I mean, like a I'm setup? Not, yeah, I mean, I'm not, obviously, okay, yeah. I'm just a little nerve-wracking, sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, turn, okay. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, in this situation, the driver messed up by not taking off her heels during the walk and turn test, even though she did pretty well overall and passed. The big mistake, however, was deciding to go through the standard field sobriety tests, SFSTEs, in the first place. The story emphasizes that these tests are tough and subjective, and people have the right to say no to them. The narrative also points out that SFSTs are given and interpreted by human police officers who can be biased. 
Critics question the reliability of these tests and doubt officers' ability to fairly judge impairment. They mention a study by Patrick Barron where police officers watching videos of sober people doing SFSTs thought almost half of them had drunk too much. Despite the driver doing okay and the doubts about SFSTs, the focus shifts to Officer Flynn and the other cops, who seemed dead set on arresting the driver from the beginning. Notably, a female officer gets ready to make an arrest by pulling out her gloves during the tests even before any clear results are obtained. All right, for this next exercise, this is going to involve balancing on one foot. So again, I'll give you the opportunity if you want to remove your shoes or you can do them with your shoes on. This is what you're going to end up doing, but I'll explain it all to you. Okay, so go ahead and bring your hands to your sides. All right, when I tell you to begin, I want you to raise one foot, either foot, approximately six inches off the ground. It's about the height of a soda can. While you're doing that, you're going to keep both knees straight and you're gonna point the toes of your raised foot out at me. You're gonna look down at your raised foot and you're gonna count out loud. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and so on until you tell you to stop. Okay. The whole time your hands are gonna be at your sides. Okay. It's a 30 second exercise. I'll tell you when the 30 seconds are up. If you place your foot down during the 30 seconds, just pick it back up and continue where you left off. Okay. So it's gonna go just like this. Watch me, I'll demonstrate for you. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, you got it? So you see how both knees are straight? Yeah. My toes are pointed out, my hands are at my sides and I'm looking down at my foot. Yeah. That's all you gotta do for 30 seconds. Uh, just so you know, I have a mounted position where I can't, then I can't straighten this left knee. Uh, I can't straighten my knees fully, but I will do... Both of them or just the left side? Both of them. I can show you even if you want me to. I have knee surgeries, like really bad uh, yeah, knee condition. Okay, right. okay, we'll do... We'll do a different exercise then. No, 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 we'll, we'll do a different one. I don't want to put any stress on your knees. Okay, do you know your left from your right? Show me your left hand. Show me your right hand. All right, go ahead and point your fingers like this with your thumbs in. At this juncture, after the driver mentioned her knee condition, Officer Flynn proceeded to explore other options, beginning with the finger to nose test. It's important to acknowledge that alternative field sobriety tests like the finger-to-nose test, may be conducted based on suspicion of driver impairment. However, it's crucial to note that these tests haven't been scientifically validated by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration NHTSA, and as a result, may not be deemed admissible in court. Nevertheless, let's assess the driver's performance in these alternative tests. Not on the, uh, on the top? Yep, there you go. Now just bring them down to your sides. With your palms out? No, palms out. Oh. Yep, just like that. Now hold that position. I'm going to explain it and then I'm going to demonstrate it for you, okay? So when I tell you to begin, you're going to, you're going to tilt your head back and you're going to close your eyes. Okay. And I'm going to give you a series of commands of left and right. When I say left, you're going to extend your left hand out, touch the tip of your finger to the tip of your nose and bring it back down. Same thing with right. Extend, touch tip to tip, bring it back down. It's important that you keep your head tilted and your eyes closed. And as soon as you touch your nose, you bring your hand back down to your sides. Okay. These are the tips of your fingers, and this is the tip of your nose. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Alright, go ahead and begin. Okay, so tilt back. Yep, and close your eyes. Start on the floor. Can you see the crash on your nine? Left. For right. Eagle Way and West Wind Drive, for 79. Left. I was dividing under which direction they turn right. three to five ten shots. No contact. Right. Left. All right, for this next exercise, you can relax. It's going to be the estimation of 30 seconds. 23, okay, 29. so can you count to 30? Yes. I have to ask. All right, so when I tell you to begin, you're going to stay standing just like you are. When I tell you to begin, you're going to tilt your head back and you're going to close your eyes and you're going to imagine 30 seconds going by silently. However, you want to count, once you believe 30 seconds are up, just open your eyes and say stop. That's all you got to do. So just like this, eyes closed, imagine silently 30 seconds, 30 seconds are up, stop. And that's it. Do you have any questions? All right, go ahead and look up, close your eyes, and begin.
right, that was about 41 seconds. All right, for this final exercise, do you know your alphabet? A through Z, not backwards, yeah. just A through Z? Yeah. Okay, so again, you're gonna stay standing just like you are. When I tell you to begin, you're gonna tilt your head back and you're gonna close your eyes, and you're gonna recite the alphabet for me, A through Z, slowly and non-rhythmically. That means no singing and don't skip any letters. Okay. So it'll be just like this, except your eyes are gonna be closed. You should be A, B, C, D, E, all the way through Z. Okay. Remember, don't skip any letters and don't sing. Okay. Do you have any questions about that? All right, go ahead and look up, close your eyes, and begin. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, X, Y, Z. All right, ma'am, at this time you are being placed under arrest for DUI, driving under the influence of alcohol, chemical, or controlled substance. Despite successfully completing every field sobriety test, the female driver was still arrested by Officer Flynn on charges of driving under the influence of alcohol, chemicals, or controlled substances. This not only seemed absurd but also revealed Officer Flynn's authoritarianism, not to mention the other two officers who shamelessly witnessed the incident without speaking up against the unjust arrest. It's worth noting that various states and municipalities have implemented laws requiring officers to intervene when they witness a fellow officer violating policies and ethical professional standards. Therefore, all three officers present at the scene share equal responsibility for this wrongful arrest. For driving under the influence, ma'am. Those exercises we look for indicators of impairment and I observe multiple indicators. Oh my goodness. Have this on video tape? I do, ma'am. We have two cameras as well as a dash camera. Alright. So, do you have anybody that can pick up your dog or where do you live? Right now, before you can Do you live in gardens? No. Did you call 15? Yep. I knew that was possibly like I was under the impairment. It's not one thing, ma'am. It's called totality of the circumstance. I mean... So, um, what are, we, what are we doing about the dog? Yeah, what are you She said she has somebody in gardens. She might need her call. Okay. I mean... No. That ain't so far. Where's your, where's your phone at so I can grab it for we can call them? Can I, um, you want me to call the guy or what? Yeah, we'll, um, we'll set it up for you. Alright, what's the phone, what's the name? Um, I don't call them like my car and now they want to take me to, uh, for a DUI or something. So, I'm going to need your help on sorting, helping me sort this out because Wait. I obviously haven't, obviously, I... We just need to come get the dog. Hi, Scott? <laughs> yeah. It's Officer Leslie's from Palm Beach Friends. Please find it. Um, okay. Yeah, just stop saying that. Guys, Leslie's getting a recipe for DUI and she has her dog to come over here and get her dog. If not, we'll have to take it to our station to get animal care and control to come get it. And I'm not DUI. Ma'am, please, please just take a seat in here. We're trying to help you out right now and you're interrupting. Yeah. So please take a seat in the back seat. I feel, I feel violent. Would you be able to come get the dog? I mean, I'm, I'm in handcuffs for goodness sake. Please, please go ahead and take a seat. Because I had a couple cocktails. Okay, uh, yeah, no, we don't want you to do no, that we then. we don't want him doing the same thing. All right. Okay, is that what about Leslie? Yes. She's going to go down to the jail and she'll be out in eight hours. So right what? around eight o'clock. So about Wait 8 a.m. Wait a second, hold on. That's standard for DUI, ma'am. I'm not DUI though. Well, I'm not. When, under when we get down there, you'll have the opportunity to provide a breath sample. And then I'll do... still be held eight hours. Yes, ma'am. No, you don't have to call me now. It's up to you. What? Like I said, she. Like I said, she's going down to the jail. She'll be out in eight hours. So. No, I'm not. Any... Uh... Attorney's not going to be able to do anything for you right now. So. But I'm not under the influence. Give me a breath. Give me a test or something. That's where we're going next. That's where we're going right after we sort this out. Okay, so. Where's my 
my car going to go? Palm Beach Gardens. I'm going to give you information on that. It's going to cost and them what happens home. if when, when I go and they find out I'm not under the influence? All right. We'll discuss that further. There's a whole process that we have, man. Okay. I'll meet you there. Thank you. You pulled me over for speeding, right? Correct. And then I told you that I had one drink at 7 o'clock. Well, people tell me they have nothing to drink, and then they'll blow double the legal limit, okay? So okay, what, but, what you tell me doesn't have anything to, to do with anything. I understand, like, why here. I am being targeted here on this situation. You're not being targeted, okay? You were pulled over. I observed indicators. Because of... I sped. All right. Go ahead and move your feet inside, man. We're not going to debate this. I, no, Turn I, the, I'm uh, not back trying camera. to be a jerk. Honestly, no, I'm No, but really we're not going to debate I'm... it. This isn't the venue to do yeah, it. We're on the side of a road. You already... Ultimately, Miss Leslie, the driver, was taken to Palm Beach County Jail, where she spent a total of nine hours for a crime she didn't commit. Following a blood draw and breath test, Miss Leslie was released without any arrest or citations. As of the date of this recording, there is no pending case under her name. On May 28, 2023, the fresh recruits of the Lordsburg Police Department were on patrol when they noticed a speeding vehicle exhibiting reckless driving behavior. The driver seemed to be weaving between lanes without signaling, prompting officers Jesus Salcedo and Sergeant Miguel Estrada to pursue the vehicle and conduct a traffic stop. It was during this interaction that the officers recognized the driver's identity. Right behind the Dollar General on the south side. Uh, Hello. Glenn. The, re the reason I pulled you over because you were kind of swerving back there. You're good? You have your registration in your insurance, please? You okay, bud? Yeah. Yeah? We're all good. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. You guys just cruising around? No, we're coming from Tisha's birthday party out at Wilkes. Tisha's birthday party? Uh, Tisha, the county. Tisha Island. Green? Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't even know it was her birthday. In the footage, Officer Salcedo seemed to recognize the driver, who was identified as 50-year-old Glenda Green, the mayor of Lordsburg, New Mexico. Miss Green asserted that she was fine to drive, mentioning that she had attended Assistant County Manager Tisha Green's birthday party and was heading back home with her son in the passenger seat. While Miss Green was searching for her documents, Sergeant Estrada approached Officer Salcedo. It was during this interaction that Officer Salcedo informed Sergeant Estrada about certain signs that led him to suspect Miss Green was driving under the influence of alcohol. Both officers were taken aback and found themselves in an uncomfortable position as they were essentially investigating their superior. Where's that? Where's that? Okay. Oh. And your insurance? So, okay. so let's so okay. I see who's with her. The little child or that little kid. Okay, 
this and I'd talk to her and often see if you small go just have to we have to do our job real quick. Do our thing and do all uh she was over there, like she was kind of on the white line. And then uh she turned which I get it, yeah it is a curve, but she kinda of, like half of the truck was on the other side, and then when I came, she turned it on me, like she turned her finger like, hey, like this, she turned it on me, like this, and she was just kind of, okay, so we can have a step out, and we can do that, and if you feel like, if she, I mean, we'll talk to her if she is, we can do this, and, um, I mean, it's your call to you, if you want to, I mean, it'll be our call, if you want to call the police, make it happen, she's probably of interest, if she is for the same but, I mean, we still got a job. Okay. Officer Salcedo asserted that he detected the smell of alcohol emanating from Miss Green and was confident that she was driving under the influence given her erratic behavior on the road. Sergeant Estrada emphasized the necessity of carrying out their duties irrespective of Miss Green's status as a mayor. He added that to prevent a conflict of interest, they would need to involve the state police. Following this brief discussion, Officer Salcedo returned to Miss Green to inquire whether she had located her documents. Initially, it appeared that she had found her proof of insurance, but it soon became apparent that it belonged to another vehicle. Considering these indicators supporting the suspicion of drunk driving, Officer Salcedo requested Miss Green to step out of her vehicle. At this point, Sergeant Estrada intervened and engaged her in conversation, noting her unsteady movements as she exited the vehicle. Let me get her, her insurance, because she's waiting on her insurance. Did you find them? This is for the Lexus. Give me one second, okay? Okay. If you want, just have her step out and we'll go for that after the meeting. Yeah. And then I'll try and step in the Okay. All right. Hey, Glenda. Do you mind stepping out of the vehicle or we go over if you pick her up on my unit room? Okay. How's it going? Good. Are you okay? Yeah. What's going on today? Okay, but what's what's going on? What did he pull you over for? Uh, he said I was coming up and swerving. Okay, well, I mean, you yeah. smell like it. I came it from just, the Elks, okay. from Tisha's birthday party. Okay, is that what's happening over there? Yeah. Okay. Um, the only thing is, Linda, is you, you do have Ethan. Okay, so the thing is though is just that you know everything, I understand, but I mean, we, the way you are right now and the way that we're seeing you, I mean, this is what we have to do. This is our job. And everything's being recorded. So I just, I just thought I'd give you a heads up. No, just let me get it. I, I understand. It's just thing is though is you already made the decision to, to drive and we got to, we get paid to do a job and we have to do it so let's talk to him first and see what we need to do okay but let me let me let me see what we need to do next but just go talk to him about your stuff and how, how much have you had do you think miss green requested sergeant estrada to release her as her house was nearby however sergeant estrada highlighted her alcohol odor and the presence of a child in her vehicle, indicating the severity of the situation as it posed a risk to the child's safety. Subsequently, Miss Green openly acknowledged consuming three or four drinks at the birthday party and exhibited various signs of intoxication while persistently seeking to be allowed to leave. Yes, three? Three or four? Three or four? Okay. Yeah. Um, just talk with him. Huh? Let me just get him home. Get who? Oh. Ethan. Oh, yeah, but you know, you know, I'm I'm the type of cop who doesn't give breaks. Okay, 
um, that, that doesn't get brakes. Okay. When I approached the vehicle, I did notice an odor of alcohol coming from uh, from alcohol coming from inside the vehicle. Okay. I don't know what you talked to him about. I didn't talk to him okay, about it. Okay, but when I observed you walk out, you were kind of swerving all over the place, okay? And then right now, you're just, as, as you're standing, you're kind of swaying side to side. Right. Okay. Thing is, you're the mayor, okay? I, I'm your employee. It doesn't matter. I'm your employee, matter. okay? So, I'm going to do a couple of uh, stand bright field tests, okay? I'll see how, how you perform on those. Okay. Linda, I can't. I can't. As a matter of fact, I just went through a class on this. Uh, okay. Let me get my phone. Two weeks ago. Let me do. Let me do this first. Can I get my phone? Well, let me do this first, okay? Let me get my phone. I, I'm, I'm not gonna allow you, okay? Let me do the SFSTs first, okay? Right. And then from there, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens, right. okay? So, let me go and turn my lights on. Okay. Can I please just get my phone? Let me do that first, okay? In the meantime, Sergeant Estrada contacted Police Chief Aaron Salazar of Lordsburg to brief him on Miss Green's circumstances and provide an overview of the situation. Sergeant Estrada was certain that Miss Green had far exceeded the legal alcohol limit. Yes, she's 47, but I can't even walk. And I said, uh, how much have you had to drink because you, you smell like it? She's like, just, I'm right here from, uh, around the corner, please let me just take him home. So please, just let me take him. I said, I mean, you're paying us to do a job. I mean, we're not gonna let her go, bro. I mean, she's she's dumb. Like she can't even she can't even stand. Okay. So Chief Salazar instructed Sergeant Estrada to contact the state police and request their presence at the scene to assume control of the investigation, previously mentioned to prevent any potential conflict of interest. Subsequently, Sergeant Estrada returned to relay this information to Miss Green and Officer Salcedo. Interestingly, despite the gravity of the situation, Miss Green seemed surprisingly composed, and in fact appeared somewhat relieved upon learning that the state police were en route to conduct the investigation. Sergeant Estrada also mentioned to Miss Green that she had the option to request a ride home, expressing apprehension regarding the safety of the child. Just talking, talking with Aaron, okay? Um, that you are our boss. We, we are. We're gonna, it's conflict no, of interest. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying anything because you're my boss. Oh no, no, I understand. It's, it's, yeah. But as far as conflict I'm, I'm just, of interest, we're gonna have to contact state police, okay? That's fine. And that's just coming from Aaron himself. So. That's fine. That's but fine. I mean, as far as I mean, he has his reasons for I, he observed it. But as far as what we're doing now, yes. So as far as what we need to do next, that's what we're gonna have to do, okay? That's fine. Now that she's standing downwind, I, I, I can yeah. smell it. Well, I'm not could, denying it. Yeah, we could smell it on you, and the way you got out of your vehicle, then it's not good. The thing is, though, is my main concern is you have him in the car. That's my main concern. I, and I know, yeah. I know, but the thing is, though, is you, I mean, there's so many things that you could have done to call us. We could have given you a ride. I mean, there's something that we could have done else, but okay. we got to just wait, okay? All right. All right. Um, yeah, we can we can do that as far as right now. Let's get your phone, um, and then we can have when the state police shows up, we can go ahead and do that, okay? You can bring it back here if you like. Come on, bud. You okay? What? While the officers waited for the state police to arrive, Miss Green was permitted to make a phone call to arrange for someone to drive her son home. Eventually, her friend named Jessica arrived and promptly picked up her son. Shortly afterward, Miss Green and another friend were observed vaping and chewing gum, suggesting once again that she remained unfazed by the traffic stop. It could be inferred that she believed her status as mayor would potentially exempt her from any trouble that night. So when you, when you got behind this vehicle, what did you see? Well, I saw her coming 38. Uh, and I thought, well, she was speeding on the main street? I mean, on the motel? No, because it was 38. It's 38. 30, 30, okay, 38. Yeah. So, so she was speeding, and then 
I thought she had a light out, so I turned around on it. The light was green. When I got behind her, she was kind of swerving. She hit the light line, driving on this, with this two wheels, one time. And then, like I said, there was that curve. Mm -hmm. I get it, it is a curve, but she. The middle, yeah, the middle aisle? Yeah, the middle aisle. She hit the middle yeah. aisle. Okay. Like her, the, the line was in the middle of the. Yeah. And then she hit her, her blinker, but she turned it on the like, way back there before she turned it. Okay. No, I mean, if you saw what you saw. I mean, she's like one here. You got speed. I mean, it's 38. It's still 30 miles per hour there. So you have speed. There's your all the cause there. And then you have the her hitting the line, the the curve. So that's what we'll have to see. Jessica's gonna come get him. That's fine. We can do that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, just talking to Aaron. He's just said to call state police. I'm good. I'm good with that. What's going on? I, I told them to tell her to wait over there so Where? I can come and get her. Because I was at home and I was like, okay, I'll get you right now. Where the? We were all the outs. You guys were all the outs? Okay. Yeah. But I had to go take my kids home okay. and then I was like, I gotta take a shower and I was like, David, tell her that I'll come back for her. Okay. Where's, where's Ethan? Uh, is it Jessica? Yeah, she can't What? Much longer. Like I said, well, he's my supervisor, and like I said, they told me they have to wait for SP. They're already in route. Ten minutes? Yeah, they're already in route. Well, we. We got eight. Can't. Can't just stand by. Around 40 minutes passed before the state police eventually arrived, which was an unusually lengthy response time. As anticipated, both Officer Salcedo and Sergeant Estrada felt frustrated by the delay. Well, yeah, I'm 10-8, everything's 10-8, so we're just waiting for state police. Yeah, 10 4 Central, just still waiting for state police. You can clearly see she's under the influence, man. Pissing me off that state police is taking the time. But the way she's walking, she's gonna be, it looks like she's gonna have high numbers. Right? Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> when Officer Spencer Roberts from the New Mexico State Police finally got to the scene, he was briefed on the complete situation and informed that it was glaringly apparent that Miss Green was intoxicated. Officer Roberts immediately approached Miss Green's vehicle and initiated contact with her while the other two officers observed the investigation. saw that, I guess he was traveling one way, and I think he made a U-turn, and I have to ask him a little bit more, but he saw the vehicle, and he thought there was a headlight out, that's what I believe he was telling me, and he made a U-turn, the vehicle was going 38 miles per hour in a 30 on motel, then he um, made a U-turn going, going towards it, and when he got behind it, he said it was kind of hitting the lines, then when he took a left on Main, he hit the, this vehicle hit the, Center Island, and okay. it went over. So then that's what that's what he pulled it over. But it, he pulled it over. She did have the little boy with her. Um, right now, the fam one of the family members picked him up. But it's gonna be Glenda Green, man. So 
Yeah. Which one's that? That's the mayor, so she's going to be the one with the black shirt. Black shirt. Yeah, so it's the mayor, and so that's why we have to call you as per yeah. Aaron telling us, the chief telling us that we have to... Yeah. So, but she, when we got out of the, when she got out of the truck, uh, she stumbled, and she, she it reeks like alcohol. And you guys got, uh, your videos and yeah, stuff like that? Yeah, everything's recording, Excellent. yeah, man, so, um, he was recording whenever he walked up and did that, but everything's documented and recorded. But yeah, we're just, like I said, we just got to see, but we haven't done any fills or anything. We just waiting for you guys. All right, you have idea or anything? Uh, he does. Yeah, he does. He has everything. Uh, Glenda Green? Yeah. recording and yeah. we'll just, we'll just uh, watch and see what he observes. Before commencing the test, Miss Green displayed evident signs of impairment and struggled with maintaining balance multiple times during the performance. It was clear that she was significantly impaired, making her unsuitable to operate a vehicle, especially with a child on board. You have her license? Yes. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what's going on there.
At this juncture, it's evident that Miss Green was unquestionably under the influence of alcohol, surpassing the legal limit. Not only was she unsteady on her feet, but she also struggled to understand basic instructions during the field sobriety tests. Now you might wonder about Officer Roberts' conclusion. Well, Officer Roberts approached Sergeant Estrada and straightforwardly conveyed that he lacked adequate evidence to confirm Miss Green's intoxication. He asserted that despite her displaying certain impairment indicators, they weren't substantial enough to warrant charging her, considering certain inconsistencies observed as well. I mean, if she's under the influence to the point where she, if she is, if she doesn't do so well on the test, then he'll be able to determine um, where we go from here. So, I mean, if she doesn't do so well, then he'll be able to determine if she goes to jail or that's what we're going But, yeah, I mean... Am I okay to stay here? Yeah, I mean, you can, you can just stand by, um, but... I don't want to get, like, too close or anything. Yeah, I'm and like I said, like... right now, as of right now, it's state police is still right now, so we're just kind of here for backup, but... Uh, and we're, we're the officers that are on scene first, so, I mean, that's yeah. the thing, but... Where this is his traffic stop, and we just charged it over to him because of the conflict of interest because he's our boss. Right. So that's a, that's the only bad thing. But that's like the shittiest part. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's, to be in our shoes right now is kind of like sucks. Yeah. <laughs> but we do get paid to do a job. So yeah. I mean, regardless of who you are, we have to do your job. We have to be held to a higher standard. And, but like I said, we just all I don't know. It just happens, I guess. I don't know. There's so many options that she could have taken, but it is what it is. Well, now we just wait. It's just so waiting Officer Roberts' decision seemed absurd. Miss Green had displayed clear signs of impairment even before his arrival, yet the Lordsburg police hesitated to act. Officer Roberts retreated to his patrol vehicle and contacted his sergeant to discuss the situation. Shortly after, he emerged from his vehicle and conferred with Sergeant Estrada again. Surprisingly, his stance remained unchanged. He determined that Miss Green hadn't surpassed the legal alcohol limit expressing concerns about the difficulty of proving a driving while intoxicated charge in court. All right. So, basically it agrees with me that it's just right. I, I think it's like a point of yeah, I mean, it was about an hour ago when you guys 
so they have the audio system down. But well, I, I, I was I coming up at the time. That's what I'm saying. I was getting here. It's up to you. I mean, like I said, this is 100% of you guys' call. Oh, no, I can hear you. But like we said, when we first initiated the child time chamber to come on, yeah. And then plus you had the kid with the two cents. Yeah. That's another thing. But yeah, like I said, whatever you guys said, that would be hard for me to prove. Or, or, I mean, based off of what she's telling me, is that she had her last day about nine o'clock. She said, so that, that would have been right, right before you guys stopped. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, I, I just I don't think there's enough to to say. Okay, we're gonna go and get, get the uh, okay. breath machine start opening. doing a PBT. I, I don't want to yeah. do that and then be like, well, I was going off of that. You know, that, 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 yeah. you know, that's not the right way to do it. Um, but out of all the DUIs and stuff I've had, it's just... No, like I said, it's, it's, it's your right there. It's your hundred percent your call. Is your there state. anybody else around that uh, can pick her truck up? That's the one in the white van is waiting for her. She's everybody's sober, so she's just waiting. And what about the truck? They can, it's literally right across the street, right there. So I'm sure if the one in the white van can take her home, so walk back and get it. We could give her a ride or go out, we could walk back, yeah, and so we could do it that way. Overall, despite exhibiting clear signs of impairment, Miss Green was neither charged nor arrested. Astonishingly, the officers not only refrained from taking any legal action against her, but also escorted her home while leaving her truck parked on the street. This incident wasn't Miss Green's first brush with such a situation. On August 14, 2021, just a few months before her election as mayor, she was pulled over by the New Mexico State Police right in front of her residence. According to a criminal complaint, during this prior incident, the officer conducting the field sobriety test found her performance indicative of driving under the influence. Moreover, when she consented to a breath test, the recorded alcohol level in her breath was 0.15, significantly surpassing New Mexico's legal limit of 0.08. Despite these findings, no formal criminal charges were pressed. However, both Officer Salcedo and Sergeant Estrada explicitly stated in their police reports that Miss Green was undeniably under the influence of alcohol. Officer Salcedo's report explicitly mentioned his belief that Glinda was severely under the influence of alcohol. Furthermore, MSP Officer Roberts noted inaccuracies in observing the correct number of clues during the standard field sobriety test, emphasizing that Glinda should have been arrested for TW. The report concluded by affirming that Glinda was unfit to drive due to alcohol influence, yet no further investigation has been initiated. As of now, despite these documented instances, Miss Green remains in office as the mayor of Lordsburg. Thanks for watching our latest video on U.S. Corrupt cops shedding light on the injustice faced by innocent individuals like the two cases of sober men unjustly arrested. Your support is crucial in spreading awareness and holding authorities accountable. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like, and share this video to amplify the message. Together, let's demand justice and stand against corruption. Your actions matter.